How's it going guys? Today I got a great video for you. Together we're going to unbox and assemble this brand new 3 horsepower saw stop professional cabinet saw. I want to say that saw stop didn't sponsor me. This is something I when I purchased on my own and I'm doing an independent review. So all you woodworkers out there will have the opportunity to see what this saw is really like and get my opinion in the end. This saw is a tremendous upgrade. I had a Delta Unisaw for many, many years, and that's what you see me use on most of my videos up to this point. It had a 110 volt motor, which didn't have enough power. I would blow fuses in the garage. It was also a right tilt blade, uh, and it didn't have the safety features of the saw stop. Those are the reasons why I wanted to upgrade to this. Before we open this saw, I first want to explain one common problem that occurs to a lot of people when they purchase these saws, and it actually happened to me too. When I went and purchased the saw, it's supposed, you're supposed to get four boxes with it. Well, the people at Rockville only gave me three. That's a big problem because I had to drive all the way back there and get another box. They forgot to give me my extension table. When you get the saw, make sure you get all four boxes. Okay? You should have an extension table. You should have your fence system. You should have a rail for your fence system. And you should have the saw itself. Each has its own part number, and I'm going to leave the list of the correct part numbers you want for a 220 volt, 36 inch saw in the notes below. With that being said, let's get started guys. When buying a saw stop table saw, there's two different types of bases. The first is your professional cabinet saw base, and the second is your industrial cabinet saw base. The professional saw base, it raises the saw up by the motion of your foot on a total of four wheels. Two of the wheels move in a 360 degree fashion, the other two are fixed in a straight direction. That means it's very hard for you to maneuver this around objects. In contrast, you have the industrial saw and it raises everything up by a small hydraulic pump on there that raises the saw up off of the ground. All the wheels on there are 360 degree turning wheels, so it's very easy for you to maneuver the table saw around your shop. After doing a significant amount of online research into this matter, even forums and whatnot, it was very obvious that the best solution was to get the industrial base because of the simple, the ease of raising everything up and the versatility. It's not much more for the industrial base, and it's one of those things that will save you a lot of headaches in the future. With that being said, my saw stop professional table saw came with many boxes. This is the main box. As you can see, it houses the main body of the saw. When going through it, you have to be very careful. Many items are packed in small little spaces, and it's very easy to miss one. Among the areas where items can be hidden, one of the major ones is the motor door. When opening it up, you can see you have your blade, your manual, as well as your wrenches. You're going to need to install the blade and use the saw. One challenge of unpacking the saw was where to put all the packing materials as they accumulated. A little trick I did was getting the main box and turning it upside down and using it as a place to put everything. This is a quick overview of all the items that came out of the main box of the saw. This will help anyone building this to make sure you didn't miss any of the items that were hidden in little crevices. Here it is, the moment of truth, standing the saw for the first time in my wood shop. Remember, when you do this at home, you want to make sure you have some extra help because this is a very, very heavy saw. You don't want to hurt your back lip. Out of all the tools I bought, I have to say, this saw was packed very well. They used every nook and cranny they could to pack things in. Here you can see, even inside the main cabinet, they found room to put things. This is the main motor switch that they even zip tied into place. Here I am moving the saw for the first time with this industrial mobile base. The wheels make it an ease to move it around and you don't even notice you're moving it. To prevent development of rust during shipping, the saw is covered in oil and coated with a rust resistant paper. This can easily be removed by first wiping it off the surface. It may take a couple paper towels to get it all off, but afterwards it's very very easy to remove by using mineral spirits. It only took a few applications to remove all the oil from the surface. With the oil off you want to make sure you're able to protect the surface of your brand new saw. I used Johnson's Paste Wax. 
I've used this many times on my old Delta Unisaw, and it's held up pretty good over time. After applying it to this saw, I've noticed that it was blotching a little bit. So I decided to use an alternative product called T9 Bow Shield. It's something I read about in online forums, and figured I'd give it a shot this time. After picking it up at my local Rockler store, I put a couple coatings on, and it led to a very smooth, glass-like finish. One thing that made the assembly an ease was how well organized the hardware carton was. Each area had its own little tab you could open up to get the hardware you need for the required step. To assemble the hand wheels, turn the handle onto the main body with a wrench. To install the hand wheel, insert it onto the shaft, slide in the metal alignment bar, and use the threaded plug to lock the whole assembly into place with a supplied wrench. The next step is installing the dust collection port, which consists of threading in three self-tapping plastic screws from the rear. From there we installed the motor cover door, which consists of just aligning the hinges and sliding the pin in from the bottom. As you can see the door opens nice and smoothly. With the main body of the saw finally assembled, we can move on to installing the cast iron wings. When doing this, as you can see, it's good to have another person with you to hold the wing while you slide the bolts through the holes. You install four bolts during this process, but you only want them hand tight. You don't want to tighten them all the way yet. With the cast iron roughly in the correct position, next we lay a straight edge across the surfaces to make sure they're in correct alignment with each other. The key is to look and make sure there's no gaps. If you see any gaps between the cast iron and the straight edge, simply adjust the wing. Once you're in correct alignment and you no longer see any gaps, you can adjust the bolts to their final tightness. Once this side's tightened, you can simply repeat the process on the other side. With the other wing installed, you can next move to mounting the on-off switch. It's simply mounted with two bolts that are threaded into the cast iron. One nice thing the saw stop table saw offers is that it has hold downs for the tools. Here we're going to simply install the one for the two wrenches that it comes with. All you do is insert the sheet metal screw and then hang the two wrenches on it as seen in this picture. It's pretty simple. On the other side of the saw we have our miter gauge and riving knife bracket. Simply slide it into the steel holes in the main body and secure it with a sheet metal screw like we did the bracket on the other side. As you can see everything fits in it very nice. When you first turn the power on to the system the lights go through a flashing series which indicates that it's testing the computer circuitry to make sure the safety system is in correct operation. You can see what these lights mean by looking at the handy table on the side of the switch. Now let's turn on the power and see what it does. Sounds great. With the main saw assembled and running, I now can focus on putting together the rail system. When you purchase the saw, there's a basic level and there's a more advanced T-rail system. I opted for the more advanced one after reading online reviews. I figured you spend this much on the saw, you might as well get the best system you can. And here they are, all the components from the rail box. We now have one more box to open up, and that's the one that has the actual fence itself. Let's take a look and see what's inside. Here's a bird's eye view of all the components that were in the two boxes we just opened. When attaching the rails to the saw itself, you'll have four bolts that screw into the main body of the saw. These thread into the cast iron. I was originally unsure if I'd be able to mount this rail by myself without dropping it. I quickly found out a little trick. If you go and thread the first bolt in, you can then hinge the rest of the rail off of it and align the rest of your holes. Where the rails align with the cast iron wings, there's no threads for the screws to go into. For that reason, you use a nut and a bolt. At this point, we're just going to leave them hand tight. Repeat this process for the back rail. When attaching your nuts and bolts on the rear, 
This is your last chance to make sure everything is correctly plumbed. Utilize the straight edge and make sure everything is in correct alignment and then tighten down all four bolts. With the wings correctly installed, we now can move on to installing our extension table. As you can see, we got a couple more parts we need to put on this saw. We're gonna start by putting on this simple leveling plate and attaching it with two screws. Next, we're going to attach the leg bracket with a nut and a bolt on both sides. Now we can set the extension table into place and adjust it for levelness using the center bracket. Now that the table is aligned, we can insert a nut and a bolt on both sides and lock it into its final place. Next, we're going to assemble the legs. We're going to start by getting the rubber feet and threading a nut all the way down to the base of each foot. From there, we're going to thread the feet into the legs. With the legs assembled, we're going to attach them to the bottom of the extension table bracket using two nuts and two bolts. The last step in assembly is installing the large metal bar that has the ruler on it to the front rails. The bar is attached to the front rail by seven bolts that go through the bottom of the rail and thread into the bar. When doing this, it's imperative to make sure you don't drop the bar on the ground. To prevent this, start by hand tightening a few of the bolts in and then go to the rest. With the rail installed, all we have to do is drop in the fence. With the saw assembled, let's fire it up one more time. Wow, that sounds great. Hope you enjoyed today's build. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Feel free to check out my channel too. I have everything on there from tool reviews of Festool and miter saws to projects I've done in the shop. In the comments below, let me know why you want to get a saw stop and what you think you're going to like about it the most. Have a great day.